Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism of All series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5, where we pick up where we left off with our mission to Venus and to Mars. Uh, the Venus mission is uh, approaching its arrow breaking, however, uh, that, that's not really the critical portion of the mission. We do want to get experimental data from the low EVE slash Venus orbit, and that's the critical part. Uh, getting some error breaking data will help in future missions. Uh, we don't expect this mission to actually survive that pass though, or actually, I mean, if it survives then we'll actually be able to bring it into orbit around Venus, but I, well, we'll see, we'll see, no guarantees. Uh, the thing is, I need to make sure that I time the experiments correctly so that we are low over E slash Venus and not too far away, and also not not exploded or anything. So that's that's my main concern at this point. All the solar panels are retracted and and why don't I actually see my power situation up here? That's funny. Hmm. I thought I had it up. Fuse box. I didn't uh, tell fuse box to go away, did I? Anyway, 11 hours worth of uh, energy, and we've only got two hours left before the periapsis, so all good there. I don't think we're anywhere close to low over Venus yet, so I'll hold off on telling the experiments to go. Uh-oh, uh, connection error could cause issues, yes. Uh, hmm... Do you suppose if I told it to do the experiments now, it would be close enough to Eve slash Venus? Perhaps. Okay, well, let's start to observe the mystery goo. Start to log temperature. And start to log gravity data. Okay, so those are our experiments, and we'll probably actually lose electric charge way before now 10 hours because we're going to be transmitting this data back. Anyway, let's see. Oh, still high. Okay. Uh, reset. Oh, we didn't actually send all the data on the gravity scan. Okay, transmit that. Okay, so we're going to have to tell it to observe Mystery Goo again. Again. Oh, that thermometer is not working for us. Log temperature and log gravity data. Okay. Let's see if in 15 more minutes it'll work out. We've only got 50 minutes until we are going to have our periapsis. Uh, I still got the AIES antenna out for some reason. It's not necessary anymore, so I'm going to retract it. I'm going to send that command. Okay. 20 minute delay now. No connection. Still high over Eve. Ah, could get nine more signs out of this one, but we can't transmit anyway, so we might as well reset that. Okay, one more observe. Oh, right, so no connection. Okay. Ah, retracting the AIES antenna, okay. Well, this is going to be dicey. I don't think we're going to get the low over U slash Duna. Uh, U slash Venus, sorry. Uh, uh, things are going the way they are right now. We've got no connection. So it'll have to arrow break successfully if we are going to be able to do this. It's possibly uh, possible that um, Venus itself is blocking our way. It 
It might be a horizon problem due to Venus itself. I don't know. No, it doesn't look like it. Looks like uh, we would have a connection if the if Pratchett Station was on the right side. Anyway, here we go. But pretty soon we'll be blocked by Venus anyway. like computer valiantly burning away all our RCS fuel in order to uh, keep us retrograde. Smart ASS would probably burn less, but what the hey, we've got plenty. We are now in physical time warp. That could be because RCS is firing all over the place, but it probably is because we are considered in the atmosphere though it's not producing much drag on us right now. Let's uh, get Fermira Space up. We do have a Mach number. Let's move this over here. So far, temperatures are pretty mild. Still no connection. Once I get connection, I'll tell it to do the experiments, but I doubt I'm going to get connection back while we're this close to Venus because of the horizon problem. Okay, temperature is going up dramatically now. I'm going to reduce time warp. Atmosphere is a lot thicker than I thought it would be. Starting uh, flame effects at 220 kilometers. Stuff blowing up. We'll get the specific order of that later on. Looks like the solar panels aerodynamic failure. That's interesting. Uh, looks like we're going to be in a crash course judging from the way our periapsis is coming down. High dynamic pressure. from my ears. That was momentarily painful to my ears, but even though we seem to have aerodynamic failure, we don't have that anymore. But we are now crashing. So much, much higher than 110 kilometers would be advisable here. But uh, surprisingly, uh, everything's intact. Unfortunately, we can't do anything with it because no connection. So what, what actually did fail? Thruster blocks, the solar panels, and the joint between the engine. So the engine is just sort of sticking there by sheer aerodynamic force. And also, between a conic service module. Oh. Uh, so uh, the joint between, oh I see, here and here. So plenty of failures. Not too much overheating. Right, I mean, uh, here, well these burned up, but they were sort of sticking out. 
in fact, if the soul, uh, as you can see, the solar panels here are fine. It's uh, uh, actually if they were just shielded by this tank here, they would have been fine. It's because they were sticking out on this tank that was the problem. Well, this is going to just crash and uh, in multiple pieces. It'll be interesting to see what terminal velocity is. How slow this will be brought to before it crashes. There's a minuscule chance that this thing could survive. I mean, terminal velocity right now is 420. Well, definitely, if we had bothered to, if I had bothered to put a parachute on this thing, it could probably survive this. Note for the future. I wonder whether we're on over land or over what passes on this planet for water. There's some real suspense here. I don't know whether this is going to survive or not. The The speed is still going down pretty well. If it survives, all we need to do is wait for the planet to rotate. We could, yeah, we'd, uh, we'd have to hope that electric charge holds out. We do have these uh, panels that are always open available to us, but they're not at a great angle and they're blocked by the dish in, in this orientation. But if the electric charge holds out and this survives the landing, possible landing, then we could transmit some serious data back. Looks like there is ground. I mean, normally if, uh, if it was liquid we'd get a uh, true altitude that is lower I know uh, that is higher than the than the altitude above sea level but it isn't so there's probably some low-lying ground here underneath us not sure whether that's a good or bad thing in terms of the impact We seem to be, we're no longer decelerating as much as we were. Then again, we're not going down as fast as we were either. Pretty much riding terminal velocity here. So, if I had calculated that ahead of time, I would have been able to figure out whether we were... It's not a tough equation, terminal velocity. It's a pretty simple one. Wow, it's amazing how how complete the suspense is and how little I can do anything about it. Uh, it's the first time in... because uh, when I'm, of course, re-entering or doing any other maneuver, like uh, trying to land the space shuttle, for instance, I have direct control, I, I can do something about it. But right now, it's, uh, it's all, all out of my hands and it's keeping me in suspense for an extraordinary amount of time. Well, we are at uh, 10 Earth atmospheres and climbing here. And realistically speaking, this would have been crushed by the pressure by now probably because this was built as a spacecraft. We certainly had no intention of having it land on Venus. So it wasn't really built for this. So probably would have been just... Well, then again, that... Um, 
the cylindrical service module would be built for this because it has to contain the fuels at uh, most probably more than definitely more than 10 atmospheres worth of pressure I think I don't know for sure but so I think it would be built for that sort of thing the rest of this stuff though probably not we still got a long way to go as we slow down it takes longer and longer to get to the surface and it's it's so where's our time to impact well it says 1 minute and 33 seconds and no 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 I don't think so I can do the math in my head and there's no way we're going to impact in 1 minute and 33 seconds no it's gonna be a lot longer than that I think I'm going to go do something else for a while while this is slowing down I've got 2000 seconds at least as far as I can tell Ooh, we appear to be passing through a cloud layer here and we are now spinning That could be a problem. Not as fast as it seems because we are on physical time warp slightly, but if it gets worse, don't know what that will do to our ability to set this down. Uh, vertical speed still decreasing. Now below possibly survivable levels for at least parts of these parts of this but tough to say so clouds of Venus here what poisonous gas this is the atmosphere is now more than 42 times that of the surface density of Earth's really should have looked up what okay well this spinning is really okay it's actually this speed that's still pretty bad um, everything's symmetrical so I'm not entirely sure what's unbalancing it uh, this is off and there's no point in me trying to send any signals can't do that so I can't control it, can't get anything to stop, uh, you know, could do a kill rotation thing here, but should have done that ahead of time. Okay, it's been a long wait to find out what the fate of this particular probe may be, and I guess we'll be probably impacting at around 7 meters per second here. Still got a little bit of time to wait as the atmospheric pressure is not around 80 times that of Earth's. Still no connection so I can't really do anything about this. The spinning isn't as bad as it looks, it's more like, well it's still pretty bad. Okay, here we go. Final minute or so of uh, of descent. Rotating very quickly. That will probably make landing safely a little bit trickier. We're not really we we're not really slowing down anymore. We got impact at about 7.5 meters per second. A simple reaction wheel would have been able to stop this, obviously, but I did not put one on. Obviously, I didn't expect that we'd be doing this with this probe, so I don't feel too bad about not putting one on. We are now in real time, and so this is the real spin rate, which is very fast. Still not entirely sure what produces this.
I think it's just some conspiracy to prevent me from landing this safely. When, of course, I'm not supposed to be able to land this at all. But anyway, we're gonna see soon. Okay, and some friction with the... Oh, what the heck was that? Okay, don't just... Okay, just stop, stop. Why is it doing this? Uh, I don't have any connect... Oh, well, I can time warp. Uh, no, I can't because it's on the ground. Um, oh, now I can. Okay, good. All right, and electric charge, probably not great. Uh, I doubt much of the sun's light actually reaches the surface through all that atmosphere. No, I wouldn't think so. Uh, surface atmospheric density is 90 times that of Earth's. I'll have to check that. And so, how long will we have to survive here before we get... Obviously we don't have any way to connect to Earth right now. It depends on how quickly Venus rotates it has a weird rotation. It's not. Mars has one that's close to Earth's, but I don't remember what Venus's was. Anyway, uh, let's see if electric charge holds out. Uh, we can't time warp too much because then we'll hit this alarm. But let's see how far we do. Ah, well, that was, uh, that's the end of that. So, no way to solve the electric charge problem. And so electric charge has run out on this probe. So we don't get any bonus signs for actually landing it on the surface, which is sort of a shame. That's that's a little bit of a downer. But uh, yeah, interesting, interesting experience. I think it's time to take care of the Mars mission, and we should get plenty of science out of that. Hmm, I say that, though we really are in a bad orientation with respect to the sun right now and we have no connection to fix that so we have to time up a little bit and then try and fix our orientation here otherwise we're gonna lose electric charge in about 14 hours okay now we have uh, connection what direction should I point in now uh, Again, I wish there was a point towards the sun option. Uh, could I target the sun? Is that a thing? And then orient towards target. No. But pointing towards Moho would be close. So let let me just do that. Do we have RCS on? Yeah. Uh, sorry for the instantaneous thing. I should have used uh, Flight Computer. It's also got the target possibility. Okay, and now our electric situation is okay. We don't have any more maneuver nodes, so that's all I needed to take care of before we enter the Mars system, the Mars sphere of influence. Good. Let me turn that off, give the signal to engage SAS. And we will, well, I don't think we need to set Duna as the target anyway. Doesn't really matter. Yep. Okay. Don't know what this signal delayed to target Moho is when it did it automatically already. Okay, here we are again. The Mars slash Duna sphere of influence. Periapsis 
680, so I've got a plan to dip it into 50 kilometers like I did last time, expecting the same result. If maneuver nodes are possible. No, no, don't set anything as a target, no. I think it was a little bit less than 50, wasn't I? I forget the exact number that I was at last time. Okay, so we are now in in the area that we need to be for some experimentation, but we don't have connections, so let's time warp a little bit to regain that. And then we can start sending some signs back home with a 20 minute delay. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's let's do this. Activate data recorder. Observe mystery goo. Log gravity data. And give me a thermometer reading. Okay, all that is set. Our electric situation is fine. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's just time warp through the 20 minutes. Okay, data is being recorded. Who feels right at home here? Gravity scan, well, let's uh, transmit the gravity scan first. 100% of the science data for that. And I'm sure the thermometer scan can't be done right now. Okay, uploading data, 100% of that was sent. Okay, now let's send this one. Yeah. Okay, that was sent. I don't know how much data we need in order to, I assume we need to fill it up to 500. So let's just keep, uh, probably in 15 minutes that data is gonna fill up all the way. So I think I can tell it to do the readings now. Okay, let's time warp to that. Oh, no connection. Uh, 300 units, okay, so we we're just short. And we now have no connection. Let's wait a little bit. Plenty of time. Okay, now we've got 20 minutes delay. We've got plenty of data now. Now, do the readings. Okay, 500 science. Long-awaited confirmation seems to indicate that Duna does indeed have polar ice caps. Well, it says polar caps, but we could figure that out. It's uh, well, I guess further studies will have to be performed to determine its composition. Oh, okay, I guess we didn't even know it had polar caps. There are also thin atmos. There are also thin atmosphere covering. There's also a thin atmosphere covering the planet. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. All right. Uh, well, as long as we get science out of it, let's do that. Transmit that data. Five hundred science. More science than you can shake a stick at. Okay. Uh, why does it say zero science added here? Why does it say zero science added there? I'm a bit worried about that. Huh. Well, I guess we'll find out once we get back home. Let's try and make sure we do the low over Mars slash Duna stuff this time. Alright. Yep, we can time warp to the maneuver node. Close alarm, thank you very much. And 
let's point at the node. Oh, that takes 20 minutes. I forgot. Uh, I should really set the default uh, for the alarms to one hour because, well, clearly we need the time. Three minutes, which is what the current default is. Where is that? Default margin. Well, that's clearly no good. Uh, let's say 30 minutes on that. Yeah, let's just add a zero to it. Okay, hopefully that'll be better. Okay, I think we're close enough. Let, let's do this cautiously. Let's say 40 meters per second. Not seconds, meters per second. And 50% throttle. And I'll tell it to burn right now. 41 minutes! Well... That could be a problem. Uh, okay, all right. Let's let's deal with that. What does happen if we can we? I don't think we can slide this anymore. It's just gonna not let me. So we better just leave that alone. We're way past it. And, well, we can't really see what's going on properly. There we go. We're like this. And we just want to get into Duna's atmosphere. That could be tricky. Could have just done with RCS from further out instead of waiting the day. Okay, I think we're sufficiently lined up. Let's time warp. Well, now I have no connection to kill the thing if I need to, so better get it right. You know, normally a maneuver closer to planet has less effect, but now this one... Burning the same amount seems to be having a magnified effect. This is the wrong way around, I swear. Okay, uh, clearly we did too much of that. I need it to point... Well, actually, it can hold this. Uh, well, it doesn't really know what it's doing right now because the maneuver is gone. Um, and if I turn that... Okay, well... I am... Um... I can't use RCS because it's, it's currently using all the RCS. I think I wanted a hitting of 180. Gotta execute that, take this off, get rid of that. No, no connection. Well, even even smart ASS can't deal with that. Okay, now we have connection. Alright, uh, so like I said, get rid of that, execute this. It's actually just drifting towards thing. Uh, I don't think Smart ASS is actually executed because flight computer is still in control. So it's just drifting over there. So I trust that the new version of Remote Tech will prevent me from doing this with RCS. I So new version 0.24 must not allow me to do with this with RCS but now that it does let's just go for it. This has been an extraordinarily long mission as it is.
Okay, I think I'll have Smart ASS handle retrograde. It's just better at things. Uh, right now, it's uh, there's a struggle probably between Flight Computer and Smart ASS. Maybe I should just cancel that. Flight Computer is trying its best to waste uh, RCS fuel, so I'm just gonna time warp until the command is canceled. I I'll wait before retracting the solar panels. Okay, now it's finally stopped, and let's view Smart ASS's smart use of of our CS fuel. Very impressive. Okay, now. Now I have to think about retracting solar panels. About an hour out, we've got. Well, we probably have plenty of battery for that, so let's do that. I'm gonna send that signal. I don't know which solar panel is the one that sticks out anyway, so I'll have to wait to find out. Okay, right. No connection. That's handy. There's the one. Oh, well, we can get the AIES antenna down too. Oh, well, once I get connection. Okay, so AIES antenna down, this solar panel array retracted. Oh, it doesn't seem to have uh, taken my initial... There we go. Alright, uh, 51.6 seems a bit high. Might still work. Let's Let's find out. Okay, at this point, I think. Oh, now we weren't very. We, it took a while before we could get the. Hmm. Get the experiments for low. Around the planet. Maybe I need to wait a little bit longer. Okay, all of that is dealt with. Now, how close should we get? Uh, probably, well, we've got a 20 minute delay now, but there's no telling how long it'll be when it, as we get closer and whether we'll have connection or not. Uh, okay. We need to get the recordings, the, the actual data. Even if we can't send it when we are at periapsis or low, uh, low over Mars, uh, on the outward journey, if we happen not to get captured by Mars, we could still transmit it. So let's give the order to observe mystery goo, log gravity data, and log temperature. And what I'm going to do is actually in five minutes, I'm going to have another set try it. That way we have a better chance, instead of waiting through the 20 minutes or so. So right around here, I'll tell another bunch, let's say on this side, to observe mystery goo, log gravity data, and log temperature. Hopefully that'll work out. Uh, we are oriented retrograde. We are all set for for re-entry of some sort. Okay. I think uh, we can approach.
Okay, looks like we got the mystery goo. Uh, near Duna. Okay, so we got it on the first one. And we got the gravity scan. How about the thermometer? And we got a thermometer scan. Okay. Uh, Alright, let's send the thermometer out first. We've still got connection. 56 science added. That still makes me worried about what happened with the 500 science we were supposed to get. Yeah, transmit that data. 91 science added. And finally, the gravity scan. The most lucrative of these. And 154 science expected. And 154 science recorded. Excellent. All right. Uh, we don't need these anymore, but they'll just pop up. But there's no point canceling them. It won't arrive in time anyway. So we continue. Let's monitor heat on the engine. We're gonna get, ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. And nice to know you care. All right, so here we go. We are now in the atmosphere according to physical time warp. But not feeling the effects yet. passing over the poles so or the view is a little bit weird as we sort of slide around got no connection it's alright all the science has been transmitted we really don't need a connection now if it doesn't get arrow captured I'm not entirely sure we need it to stay in orbit around Mars don't know if there's any benefit to that. We definitely can't land it on Mars. Mars does not have the atmosphere to slow us down the way Venus does. Okay, critical portion. Temperature is mild. Slowing down reasonably well. Just waiting for a positive apoapsis here now. Don't need to check map view. The temperature is going down, so I don't need to check that anymore either. With an orbital period of two hours, that's... That has nothing to do with anything, does it? No. I was wondering whether it was the time to our escape or not, but no it isn't. does not seem like this is sufficient for arrow capture but with our resulting trajectory looking like this I don't think there's any point trying to do anything else except for burn to orbit. So once we get connection, we'll do that. At the very least, it'll provide supplementary communication assistance for any other any other vessel that might happen to want to arrive at Mars. It's got the AIES antenna and also the huge antenna to transmit data back, so it could be very helpful, now that I think about that. Ok, 
Okay. Just waiting for a connection now. I don't particularly care where we end up before we get connection. I'll just immediately start from there. We are oriented in the right direction, retrograde, so that's all set up fine. I decided not to put the keythane detector on this because of the electric charge draw. The keythane detectors take up too much. So I had talked about that, but I decided against it. Mm, not out of the atmosphere yet. Oh, looks like we'll have to go all the way out to here before we can get a line back home. Not very efficient, but if that's what we gotta do, that's what we gotta do. And after we get the line back home, we'll have to wait for the signal delay. Let me try and plot the burn for orbit here. Ooh, that's not a very efficient way to go. And it'll lead us to crash into the planet. Um, now that'll at least give us a safe margin. Yeah, sure. I mean, we've got plenty of fuel. But what are the chances that we could do this right? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, well, no, there's no chance. Because uh, uh, the node's in eight minutes. Aha. We need to set it off for even longer, and that means it's even more of a burn. Okay. Okay, now it's just a matter of whether the station on the opposite side is going to match up with us and it doesn't look like it's on the right side right now. Okay, now we have a line. The delay is 20 minutes, so let's set that off to 20 minutes. Well, thereabouts. See how much more we need. Right. Let's just have a burn at the node of about a thousand eight hundred in twenty one minutes full power. And let's see what happens. Just burning right at Mars here, trying our best not to leave. While I can send a message, let me get the solar panels out. And even the AIES antenna out for future missions, if this works out. Alright, we have an orbit around Mars. Very long orbit right now, so let's hope it uh, brings it down to something a little bit more reasonable. Okay, a four-day orbit around Mars. 
Uh, that's acceptable for now. Obviously the thing to do would be to burn that periapsis to bring it down even further. And why don't I just do some of that right now? Okay, a little bit past where I wanted to be with that. Uh, 20 minutes, still got connection, excellent. And let's say 1,040 meters per second. Maximum throttle, and yeah. That should be... Oh, wait. Uh, oh, I forgot. 30 minute delay. Um, should be okay, maybe? Let's... I don't think... There's no way we can crash, so... We're pretty high up here on this side. Yeah, I mistook the alarm for the node. Okay. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh no, uh, Smart ASS and its node ability. Oh darn. Uh... Okay. Alright, well, considering the weird spin, I guess it's not too bad. Uh, we could still burn a little bit more. Let's go flat retrograde, say 30 seconds, uh, 30 meters per second on that. And set that up. Okay, that didn't have quite the effect that I thought. All right, but here we are. The start, vague start of a communication network around Mars. Polar orbit, not not a bad orientation for our first first real communication satellite, which will only occasionally actually have communication, of course. So a little bit of flaw there, but we've done plenty of science. Uh, just for the last thing, I want to pop back over to the the Space Center and check the R&D building to see if we got that 500 points. So uh, yeah, let's uh, end over there. Okay, yeah, well, uh, not quite 500. We got uh, 499.8, I guess. So uh, yeah, we got that done. So that's good. And we've got 1,987 science. I'm not going to spend it right now. Uh, you'll have to tune in next time to see how I deploy that science. But uh, on the note of a successful, I mean partially successful Venus mission, we didn't get the low readings obviously, and a successful Mars mission, uh, I think it's uh, time to wrap this up. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.